Hey, this is Mr. Jaynes. In this video, we'll be talking about measures of center and spread. Now, all the examples in this video will center around what's called one variable quantitative statistics. That means that all the topics, topics in this video will have to do with things like how long it takes you to get to school in the morning, how tall you are, things like that, not things with categories like your favorite color. So first off, what is a measure of center? Well, a measure of center is the most typical, common, or normal value in a data set. It's often thought of as the center of a distribution, and sometimes it's called the average. Suppose your class just took a math test, and it was scored out of six. Here we have one class's histogram, and we have the second class's histogram. If you look at these and try to figure out what the center is, or the, the average or the typical score that everyone got, in the first one, it's kind of hard to tell. It looks like the middle, or the center, is right around three, but since the scores were uniformly distributed, it's kind of hard to tell. In the second one, it looks like the average score, the, the center score, is probably right around three points out of six. But again, we're kind of guessing it here. There's got to be a way to give an exact answer for what is the center of that distribution. What did the average person get? There's actually three different ways to measure the center of a data set. The first way to find the center is called the arithmetic mean. That's found by summing or adding up all the values and dividing by the number of values you have. The mean is often called the average, and this is the one you're probably the most familiar with. The second way to find the center is called the median. Now the median is the middle value in an ordered list of values. So you may remember taking maybe a list of numbers, uh, maybe from a survey, putting them all in order and counting until you found that middle value. The middle one is called the median. If there are two middle values, the median is the mean or the average of those two middle values. The last way to find a center is called the mode. Now the mode is the most frequent or the most common value in a data set. If there's a tie for the most frequent or most common, there could be two modes. There could be three or four modes if there's maybe three or four most common values. But if no values are repeated, they all have the same frequency, then there is no mode. So it's hard to tell exactly where the center is, what the mean, median, and mode of these three things are, without actually having the raw data, the, the values, the numbers in front of us. So let's try doing an example or two where we have the actual data. Let's try this first example problem. Find the mean, median, and mode of the following sets of numbers. 23, 29, 20, 32, 23, 21, 33, and 25. If you think you know how to do this, pause the video here and try this on your own. But if you're not sure, keep watching. Pause here if you can. The answers will be up in three, two, one. First, let's try finding the mean or the average. Now remember, to find the mean, we've got to add up all of the values and divide by the number of values we have. In this case, I added up all the values here, and I divided by 8 because there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 different data points. Now, if you put this into the calculator all at once, that's fine. Just remember to put parentheses around the addition of all of the values. That's because order of operations tells us that division happens before addition, and if you drop the parentheses, then you'll have 25 divided by 8, and then I'll add all these numbers separately. So don't forget the parentheses. Now when I add them all together and divide by 8, I get a mean of 25.75. Now that makes sense to me because looking at the data set, it looks like the center, right, the average here looks like it's going to be about 25, right? All the numbers are kind of in the low 20s or the, the high 20s, some in the 30s, so about 25.75, about 26, that makes sense to me. Next, let's find the median. So remember, the median is the middle number uh, when all of the values are in order. So the first thing we need to do is order all of these values. So I've put all the values in order, and now the median is that middle one. So if there's eight values, uh, that means that we're probably looking for the fourth one in. So that's the first one off both ends. That's the second one off both ends. That's the third one off both ends. And so it looks like since there are eight values, there are two middle numbers, 23 and 25. So neither one of them is going to be the median. Instead, when there are two middle values, I'm going to take the mean. So I would add 23 plus 25 and divide by 2 to kind of find the average. So it turns out when you add 23 and 25, you get 48. Dividing by 2, you get 24, which gives us a median of 24. Again, that makes sense to me. That's about the center of this data set. 
Now the last thing we have to find here is the mode. Remember the mode is the most common or the most frequent uh, value in our data set. Now looking at this, looks like every data point happens only once, like there's only 129 and there's only 120. But if you look, there's actually two 223s and no other values appear twice. So it looks like 23 is the most common. Uh, so that's going to be our mode. And right there you have our mode of 23. Now I've got one more example here. Find the mean, median, and mode of 7, 2, 4, 9, 6, 7, 1, 7, and 6. Now I'm not, not going to do this one for you right now. Instead, I want you to try this one uh, on your own, and uh, we'll talk about it when we come into class next time. Give this one a try before moving on. So we've talked about measures of center, uh, what's typical or average, things like mean, median, and mode. But we have to talk about measures of spread. Now, spread is how similar or varied the set of values in a data set are. In other words, it's a measure of consistency. How consistent are all those data points? Let's go back to the example from before to think about this. Again, you took a test in math class. It was out of six points. This is the first class that took it. This is the second class that took it. Looking at these, the first class is pretty spread out. Some people got a zero. Some people got a six. There's a bunch of different scores in between. On the other hand, the second class, no one scored zero points and no one scored six points, and most people were right in the middle. Most people look at this, scored maybe two or three or four points, but it's kind of clustered more in the middle. That means that the first class was less consistent and more spread out. The second class was more consistent uh, and, and less spread out. That means that the first class has a higher spread and the second class has a smaller spread. We're using words like bigger and smaller, but there's actually a few different ways to measure with a, with a number the spread of some data. Now we'll talk about two of those ways now. The first way to measure the spread is called the range. So the range is the difference between the maximum and the minimum value of the data set. So in other words, uh, to find the range, you just look at the maximum value, the highest value of your data. You find the lowest value of your data and you subtract the maximum from the minimum. So in this first example here, it looks like the minimum score was a 0 and the maximum score was a 6. So 6 minus 0 means that the range of this first class was 6. What would the range of the second class be? Well, the maximum score was a 5. The minimum score was a 1. 5 minus 1 is 4. So there's a range here of 4. That makes sense because the data here is less spread out than this one in the first class. So this is a, a, a range of six. This is a range of four. So it is kind of less spread out. Unfortunately, range isn't always the best measure of spread. Look at these three, these three histograms. They'll have a range from one to 10, one to 10, one to 10. So the range of all of those is nine. Um, but if you look at them, some are way more spread out than others, and some are way more clustered together, they're more consistent than others. So range isn't always the best way to look at the spread. The second way we can measure the spread is called the standard deviation. The standard deviation is a statistic that measures the distance or deviation of every data point from the mean and is typically a good measure of the spread. Remember, the range only looks at the maximum and minimum values, but the standard deviation looks at every data point now there's a formula for standard deviation that we're not going to get into now. All you need to know for now is a larger standard deviation means that the data is more spread out, less consistent, and a smaller standard deviation means that the data is clumped together, more consistent, less spread out. Let's come back to this example. Remember, all three of these histograms have the same range of nine, but they're spread out differently. So their standard de deviations are going to be different. Let's choose which one of these is going to have the smallest standard deviation. Remember, a small standard deviation means that the data is pretty consistent. It's clumped together. Which one of these has the smallest standard deviation? Turns out that graph C is going to have the smallest standard deviation. Think about this dotted red line here as the center. Most of the data points here are kind of clumped or pulled in towards the center. They're not very spread out, and so the standard deviation is low. Which one of these is going to have 
the highest standard deviation. Turns out that B has the highest standard deviation. That's because if we think about the center right here, maybe right around five, most of the data is away from the center. It's very spread out, a lot near down near one and a lot down near 10. So it's very spread out, has a high standard deviation. Graph A has a moderate standard deviation. That's because it's uniform and kind of evenly spread all throughout the range here, all the way from one up to 10. So that's gonna have kind of a medium standard deviation. So in order, we've got C with a small standard deviation, very clustered together, A with a moderate standard deviation, and B would have a very high standard deviation because it's very spread out. So let's do one last thing before I wrap up here. This last example problem. I'd like you to draw a line between the matching ranges, standard deviations, and histograms. So each of these ranges matches one of these histograms, which in turn matches one of these standard deviations. Pause the video here and see if you can match them all together with a line. Pause now. The answers are coming up in three, two, one. So I'll start by looking at these histograms. Looks like the one in the top is pretty kind of uh, not very spread out. So that means it's going to have a pretty low standard deviation. So looking at these, we've got 7.9, 31.6, and 15.8. So this first histogram, not very spread out, it's gonna have a pretty low standard deviation. What about the range? Well, looks like it's going from 80 to, is that 80 to 120? So 120 is the maximum, 80 is the minimum. 120 minus 80 is 40. So the range there is, is 40. There it is. Okay, what about the next one? Well, this one is kind of moderate, has a moderate standard deviation here. It's, it's moderately spread out. It's not as, as clumped together as the first one, but not as spread out as the last one. So it's gonna have kind of a medium standard deviation. So looking at these, 31's the, the highest one. I'm gonna go with 15 here. Again, we don't know the exact formula to find standard deviation. Um, so we can only really compare them. But for range, let's see, it's going from about, let's say 40, 80, it's probably about 60 for a minimum. And it looks like it's going to 160 for a maximum. 160 minus 60 is, a, is 100. So the range is about 100 there. What about the last one? Well, I guess process of elimination, we know what it goes to, but let's double check. Again, it's much more spread out than the first two. So it's going to have a high spread or a high standard deviation. 31.6 is the highest that I can do. Um, and for the range, well, it's going from, I would say that's 20 for a minimum to probably 180 for a maximum. 180 minus 20 is 160. So that makes sense as having a larger range there. So before we wrap up, remember the key points. A center is kind of the typical or common value in a data set. And there are three ways to measure it. A mean, where you add everything together and divide by the number you have. A median, where you find the middle number, or a mode, the most common number. A measure of spread is how similar or varied the values in a data set are. So if you've got a data set that's very spread out, you're going to have a high spread, one that's kind of clumped together, consistent, you have a low spread. There's two ways to measure it. The range, where we take the maximum value and subtract the minimum value, highest minus lowest, or the standard deviation, which is a pretty complicated formula that we're not gonna learn in this video, but it tells us how spread out all the data is and takes into account all the different data points, not just the maximum or the minimum. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.